How are you? Welcome to a new video at Beyond the Cloud. Today, we are going to discuss about Amazon Machine Image or we know AMI. So an AWS AMI or Amazon Machine Image uh, is a pre-configured virtual machine image used within the AWS uh, service or cloud environment. It serves as a blueprint for creating an Amazon Elastic Compound uh, Compute Cloud or EC2 instances encapsulating components like operating system, application server, and application code. AMIs enable rapid and consistent deployment of compute resources, enhancing uh, scalability, efficiency, and reproductibility in cloud infrastructure. So they are crucial part of maintaining uni uniformity across instances, streaming, uh, streamlining development, testing, and deployment processes, and play a very key role in disaster recovery scenario. We will see how can we create an AMI and how can we launch an instance from that AMI. Uh, so if you are new to this channel, kindly like, share, subscribe and comment your thoughts. Let me know what you liked and what you didn't like. I will try to make some recommended video from you guys if you have any. Uh, so sit tight and enjoy. So before creation of an AMI, we have to understand what is an Amazon Messing image or an AMI. So AMI is a pre-configured virtual machine image used to create EC2 instance in the AWS cloud. So what does it mean? Uh, it does mean that now we have an image wherein all the operating system and the built-in softwares are already there. We have to select the image and we have to launch the instance. So if you are already familiar with how to launch an instance in, uh, or how to launch an EC2 instance, you know that whenever we launch an instance or try to launch an instance, we have to select uh, AMI. It can be a Amazon Linux 2 image, it can be a Ubuntu image, it can be a, a basic Red Hat Linux image. And that image actually contains all the operating system properties or the hardening scripts. And we just have to select it and we can launch the EC2 instance. So this is an AMI. So that AMI can be of public AMIs, private AMI, our own custom private AMIs. So the public AMI is the one that have been shared with me just to launch an EC2 instance using that. The private AMI is the one that enterprises mostly uses it. And uh, they have a pre-configured or hardened AMI uh, on their own and they use it um, and they share it with the entire organization and um, users are using that particular AMI and launching the instance. Now basically AMI have a couple of com components. Mm, uh, those are operating system, application server, uh, application code, uh, the operating system is the one is a fundamental component of an AMI. So it serves the foundational software uh, that manages the hardware resources and provides services to so, uh, some applications, software applications. Uh, common operating system uh, AMI um, includes the Linux distribution, uh, example Amazon Linux, Ubuntu, uh, CentOS um, and Windows Server. Uh, so the application server is also another component wherein the application server is a software uh, that hosts and run application, make them accessible to user and other systems. Uh, so in the context of an AMI, what the application server means, the application server is an often pre-configured with necessary settings and dependencies required for the specific application to run. Uh, example, uh, for example, like uh, Apache Tomcat, Nginx, or Microsoft uh, IIS servers. And most of the important part is the application code. The application code repro represents the actual software or the program uh, uh, that has the AMI and uh, varieties I have already described that it can be a public um, AMI or it can be a private AMI so, you know, depending on how we are selecting the AMI or how we are creating the AMI. Public AMI is the one that has been already shared with me and private one is the one that has, I have been creating and just uh, using it for my own purposes. So this is an AMI. Uh, next if we uh, move on uh, now why it is so important that why AMI is so much important so yeah. first of all the speed and efficiency uh, so uh, yeah we can we can use the AMI for the quickly deploy the instance with pre-configured environment and reducing the setup so here uh, anyone can uh, ask that okay uh, we have the user data concept right so if you know the user data concept it is kind of similar to AMI or uh, running scripts before before launching the instance but user data is a bit slow so what happens when you run user data is that your AMI or your instance launch first then the scripts run but in AMI everything runs at a time so it is much faster 
Then we have consistency, ensures inform, uh, informality across multiple instances. That means if you have one AMI and you are launching 10 EC2 instance with that AMI, so your all instances will be uh, unique or consistent, um, so not unique, uh, consistent across your environment. So this is one of the uh, key factor and the scalability. So for if you are using Amazon uh, machine image or AMI, then you can scale uh, very easily. So you can create one auto scaling loop, you can uh, launch an EC2 instance with the AMI that you really configure. So this is very much important that why AMI is important. I have seen many enterprises uses this AMI and, uh, uh, the, and it, is, it is much faster. Now next is uh, what we will do uh, in this particular video. So in this particular video, we will create one custom AMI. So we will launch an EC2 instance uh, from our pre-configured um, uh, Linux uh, distribution, uh, Amazon Linux 2. Then we will, um, then we will install something, some software there. Basically, we will install one PHP uh, applications there, and then we will create one AMI. And from that AMI, we will launch another EC2 instance, wherein we will see that everything that we configured in our first instance, we don't have to do in the second one, wherein it is already been configured. So this is the charm of an AMI. So uh, I hope this is uh, informative the theory part. Then. We move on to the practical one where I will show you how to create an AMI and how to launch an EC2 instance from that. Now I'm in this environment where I will launch the EC2 instance basically and from that EC2 instance uh, we will create an AMI and from that AMI we will launch an EC2 instance again. So uh, let's go to the EC2 console and from that EC2 console uh, we see that currently nothing is running. So we go to instances. And we will launch an instance. So currently, I am using not Virginia. You can use whatever region you want uh, to uh, to follow this tutorial. But one thing to remember uh, is that if you create one AMI in an particular region, so you cannot just move or you cannot just find that particular AMI in other regions. So suppose you are creating one AMI in North Virginia, you will not be able to find that particular AMI in Frankfurt region until and unless you copy that. So this AMI is region specific. So if you uh, create an AMI in North Virginia, you have to copy the AMI in the Frankfurt region uh, to use it. Then you can use it. Otherwise, you, uh, otherwise that AMI uh, will not be visible in your other region. So this is uh, one thing that I um, that I wanted to also share with you that this is region specific, and uh, you can you can copy it basically. So this is fine. Now uh, let's go ahead and launch an instance. So we will again we will launch an instance and we will configure something in that particular instance, and from that instance we will create an AMI. So we give this uh, instance a name, uh, maybe the base. Is it? And then we select the AMI. So this is the AMI that has been shared with me. This is a public AMI. And if we select here, uh, you see here, uh, select. So I will select Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Uh, this is fine. So Amazon Linux 2 AMI we will use. And this is has uh, this. I will use T2 Micro just to be in the free tier. Zone and the key pair I don't need it. It's basically, I will use the EC2 instance connect directly to connect to the EC2 instance and configure something. But for security group settings, I will create a new security group and I will uh, allow the SSH traffic from anywhere, allow HTTPS and HTTP traffic from the internet. So basically, you can uh, do that. I for uh, generosity purpose or for uh, complexity less complexity purpose, uh, I am. Uh, using uh, this from over all over the internet uh, basically in production you don't have to do that or if you are following or if you are using your own um, account AWS account don't do that you can select your own IP address from here my IP address you can select this one and so that only one IP address will be whitelisted uh, so I am using anywhere you can also follow that but do remember to delete the security group later I will not change anything at all right now and I will launch the instance. It will take some time to launch the instance and after its launch, I will come back. So now I came back and I see that my EC2 instance has been launched. So I will select the EC2 instance. I will see that it has a public IP address associated. And in the security group, I can also see that the port 22 is open, uh, 80 and 443 is open. Everything is fine. Now I will connect to the particular instance with EC2 instance connect. 
Now, I'm inside the EC2 instance. Uh, so as I said, I will configure something in this particular EC2 instance. And so the first thing I will uh, configure is that to make sure that all of our packages are up to date. So what I will do, I will, uh, I will give this command uh, sudo yum update minus y. So I will update my packages, hit enter, and it will update uh, update all my packages. So after updation is done. Um, uh, I will enter the following command uh, to install the Apache and PHP. So we have to install the Apache and PHP. So this one, so this command, and then I will hit enter. So this will install basically uh, the HTTP D and the PHP. Uh, and then we have to start the Apache server. So to start the Apache server, we have another command. Um, and let's clear the screen. And then I will paste this command uh, so that we start this HTTPD ser uh, service. Uh, we are starting. So you see here, redirecting to system says start HTTPD service and it is started. Uh, then we have to check uh, the HTTPD service is on or not. So we see here and this is fine. Uh, so now it is on. Now my HTTP ser HTTPD service is on. Now let's check that our Apache web page will come up if we put our public IP address in our browser. So this is my public IP address. This one, if I hit uh, in the web page, it will come up the Apache web server. So on a new tab, I will copy this one. Uh, on a new tab, I will just um, uh, open this, uh, this page here. And this is opening the test page. That means our Apache server has been configured correctly. Now, uh, the, uh, now back to the terminal. Uh, I will. I'm uh, in the terminal itself. Uh, I then we have to set up a PHP page. How to set up it? That we are going to create a PHP page in this uh, where www HTML region, and we are going to give our user correct permissions to use that. How are we doing that? Uh, basically, we are using this EC2 uh, user, right? So we have to give uh, the folder or file permission to this EC2 user. So how to do that? So we have a command, uh, this uh, user mod, um, Apache EC2 user. So I'm giving permission to EC2 user now. And this is done. And this is the Apache user group. So by this command, what we have done, we have uh, added the user to the um, Apache user group. Now, <clears throat> we will also change the ownership uh, of this directory where www directory. And so the to change the ownership, uh, we have this command. Uh, we are changing the ownership to EC2 user. And this is now done. Uh, EC2 user is the, now the owner for this uh, where www. Now we should have permission to create a PHP page in uh, where www uh, HTML. Uh, and uh, so basically, uh, we have added the user to the Apache user group. Then we have given permission to the EC2 user to this where www. So then we can create a HTML page and there are un under PHP page under this HTML folder. Let's see, now uh, we create this one with this and this is created, now it's fine. Now to check if the PHP is configured correctly in the test page window, uh, we go to the test page window and we have to add a suffix to this PHP page. After adding the suffix, our page should come up. So here and then this and our PHP page is coming up. So this is nice. Uh, so our first EC2 instance or base EC2 instance with this PHP uh, web page configured is up and running. We can see that. Uh, this is fine. Now the next step or the main step that is coming uh, that we have to create an AMI. So how to create an AMI is that you have to select the EC2 instance. You have to go to action and then image and templates and create an image. So while creating an image, you have to give the image name. I'm, I will give the image name as base image. And the description is optional. Basically, I will copy this one and paste it. And I don't need any reboot. This is fine. And this is everything is fine. And I will just uh, create it. I will create this image. 
so this will take some time and it will appear under on the left hand side under amis it will appear here and currently you see it is in pending status and it is take it will take some time for to become active uh, so uh, till the time uh, i will come back i will pause this video now i see uh, that the ami is available so once the ami is available it will be registered as a private ami you see here the visibility is private and only available to us uh, we can use that to launch more instances here you see launch instance from the ami however note that when we create a custom ami it is only available in the only region that we have created that is that means it will only available in north virginia region the the, the one that I, I was mentioning before uh, if we needed it to use it in a different region we would have to copy it and then we could do that uh, by using this clicking on the action and copy ami and if you see here the destination region is the one that i can i can select and i can copy that one so that is a different topic let me know if you want to know more about copying an ami to a different region i can do a video out of it but this is what it is this is region specific and it is only available to this particular region now fine uh, second one is that the main part that we will do uh, is that we will launch an instance from that ami how can we do that there is two way we can do that we can select the ami and launch instance from the ami from this box we can directly do that or what we can do we can go to ec2 instance go to instances launch instances and here you will see that there are couple my ami and under my AMIs, this one is the owned by my, by uh, by me. And here is the base image. This is the AMI is already selected. That means this AMI is only uh, owned by me. And this is the my private AMI. So from an EC2 instance launch template or from launching an EC2 instance um, portal, I can also use it. I can also take, I can also directly launch an instance from the AMI portal itself. I will use this one, launch an instance from the AMI. Basically, it will go to the same page. And I will give the name is the one that the uh, copy EC2 something like I have copied the uh, image so that's why I'm giving copy EC2 <laughs> uh, you can give whatever name you want so you see here this is the AMI let's see if this is the AMI ID uh, that is selected or not uh, I go to EC2 instance again and here you see this is the same ID uh, 30 AEC and this one 30 AEC so it has selected we have selected the AMI that we have created I will not change anything I do not need any key pair right now and for the security group I will only allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic from anywhere you can only select your custom IP doesn't matter so uh, I will select from anywhere and I will launch the instance so basically it will take some time for launching the instance let's go to the instance dashboard refresh the page couple of times it is still in pending status uh, let's pause this video and come back when it is running so i see that my image this copy ec2 this ec2 is now running and it is available now remember when our base ec2 was available what we did we connected the ec2 instance and we configured the php server there for copied ec2 i think we don't have to do it because we have created an ami out of our base ec2 and we from that ami we have created the ec2 instance copy ec2 instance so we hope that everything will be pre-configured and you see and i i kind of within 30 to 40 seconds it is running so it did not take took uh, too much time to launch the instance so i will copy this public ip address and i will launch it here and i will paste this is the test page if you remember after the test page is coming up we have to give another uh, suffix to this website so that our php page comes up and that's it basically and this is our php page now you see this is the ip address 172.31.36.166 and for the other one it is 172.31.33.5 so this is my base ec2 instance this is my copy ec2 instance and in the copy ec2 instance we didn't configure any php server there it was auto configured because we created an ami and created the ec2 instance based out of the email so this is the charm for an ami 
that uh, whatever you want to uh, whatever you want to launch or the operating system the hardening script or everything you can script it you can create an ami out of it and from that ami you can launch an ec2 instance and that was very fast and that is very fast so uh, this is what i wanted to show you how to create an uh, ami and launch an ec2 instance from that ami uh, this i hope this video was informative for you and this was helpful for you uh, uh, let me know uh, if you like this video let me know your comment uh, or and thoughts uh, for this video uh, i uh, hope you enjoyed it so i will be back with another exciting video uh, and then till then uh, take care goodbye